2018 has given us anything, they've given us hot women in great suits. Hello everyone, Scrivener here. The girlfriend and I recently had a date night and saw Colette. Please pardon my terrible pronunciation. Colette is a biopic directed by Wash Westmoreland about the French writer Sidonie Gabrielle Colette, who wrote a ton of books and stories, the most famous being her novella Gigi, and she's regarded as one of France's greatest female writers. It's not normally a movie I'd go out to theaters to see, but I was persuaded by the fact that she was hella bi. I'm not exaggerating in the slightest. And the film does not shy away from depicting her attraction to women, along with her obvious attraction to her husband. I'm already here for a costume drama, but a bi costume drama? And boy howdy, those queer fashions did not disappoint. I do want to say that the Google synopsis is a tad misleading. Take the idea that this movie is going to have a huge dramatic battle against a monstrous hetero villain and throw it away because that's not what this movie is. Colette is a good film, but frankly, it's not a particularly exciting one and you're going to enjoy it a lot more if you don't expect to be swept off your feet by an aggressive plot. It's more of a slow burn, but nonetheless enjoyable look at the evolution of a queer woman's life. Some of the dialogue gets a little clunky. It wasn't talky in the way that made me feel like it was written from a place of disingenuousness or cluelessness, more just that it probably could have been trimmed down some. Keira Knightley is the lead and plays Colette with Dominic West playing her husband Willie. You might know West as Jonathan in the 2014 movie Pride. Both of them bring a lot of complexity to these characters that I think would have been easy to just play as naive then hardened survivor and exploitative unfeeling monster respectively, but they don't. And the script doesn't paint them that way either, and I think that made it a lot more interesting. Because when you hear the synopsis, you think you know how their marriage and this creative theft are going to be portrayed in a morally binary way. But it's not. And even still, just because Willie isn't a monster, he isn't let off the hook by Colette for doing the bad things he does. It's complex. I'm looking back over my notes, and at one point during the beginning I just wrote, why are men like this? <laughs> because they think they can without consequence which the film actually addresses. I think period pieces can sometimes be a little stuffy. I don't think that's a radical statement, but this film isn't. Something I really enjoyed was that the diction wasn't super posh the entire time. There's casual conversations about things like divorce and queerness that are usually left out of this genre because a more conservative atmosphere better fits into the narrative's agenda. I thought it did a good job of showing that the past, TM, is not one big thing that can be quantified as entirely oppressive. There have always been pockets and communities where marginalized people could exist openly, and Colette depicts that reality. And this is the biggest thing this movie has going for it besides how gorgeous it is. This is a very queer movie. Colette is bi, a woman she sleeps with who has a god-awful Louisiana accent is bi, Colette later has a relationship with a person who is genderqueer in some way. It is worth mentioning that that person is played by a cis woman though, so your mileage may vary in regards to that, but this character is clearly not meant to be interpreted as just a cis butch lesbian. There were a couple of times where actors of color were cast for actual people who existed who probably weren't people of color. The race of those characters doesn't have a direct influence on the plot, so it's not like they have to be white. I'd love to see more directors take that approach. Also, thank you for casting Ray Panthaki. He is extremely good looking. <laughs> So thank you. Something else I really liked was that the gender and sexual empowerment stuff felt very natural. Often these kinds of movies that aim for the empowerment genre slash message have very painfully obvious metaphors that feel either disingenuous or inauthentic or both. This film did not feel that way. This movie is a nice reminder that queer people have roots, that we have history beyond tragedy. No marginalized person is injured or physically harmed in this movie. There are some things thrown in one scene, but nothing happens to them. There is confusion and sometimes animosity, but there is no punishment or loss to steal yourself against going in, which is a really nice and novel movie-going experience as a queer person. I think it's a perfect movie to either catch as a matinee or rent for a snuggly blanket evening, and it also confirms that this has been a bisexual haircut for at least a century. Thanks for watching. This isn't sponsored, it's just a tip from one movie lover to another. If you're an AMC Steps member, they have a deal on Tuesdays where you get $5 tickets. Considering that's cheaper than matinee for most theaters, it's an awesome deal. If you live near an AMC, and that's how I saw this movie, let me know in the comments if you'll be seeing Colette. Recommend us as featured creators to VidCon if you haven't already via the link in the description below. And subscribe to The Princess and the Scrivener for more movie reviews. One of us will see you real soon.